the, the, the Flint water crisis is a stark example of what happens when government fails its people in every single way. By and large, it was a crisis of betrayal and loss of trust and, and trauma and anger and guilt and anxiety, and all those things can lead to poor outcomes. In 2014, the city of Flint switched its water sources as a means to save money without providing the necessary chemicals to ensure safe drinking water. The story of Flint is one that has been told on a national scale all about the lead in the water. But is the story over? Is the water clean? We interviewed a pediatrician, a professor in science, a public figure, and a resident of Flint to discuss the Flint water crisis, which is still a crisis. Leanne Walters is a resident of Flint. We actually were at a meeting in Flint um, in regards to the water. And at that point, we had been told that the hair loss, the discolored water, and the rashes that my family was experiencing was specific to our home, that nobody else was having these issues. And so we went into this meeting, this special meeting, and we looked around and we seen all these other families having all the same things that we were going through, and they were still insistent that it was just our home. Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha is a pediatrician who is responsible for exposing the Flint water crisis. And it wasn't just the lead exposure, but we had skin issues. Um, we had a Legionnaire's outbreak, which was a pneumonia, and older people got that and died. I decided to get to the science of it because you can't argue with science. And if you can prove it with science, then you can prove what's wrong. Um, but I knew that if I was going to kind of create a change or make a difference, I would need to have the data in my pocket. Professor Marty Kaufman is a specialist in groundwater contamination. Many people didn't know until the actual review of blood lead levels done by Dr. Mona Hanatisha that there was something really wrong. When a pediatrician hears the word lead, we, we rightly freak out because we know what lead does. It's an irreversible neurotoxin with no safe level. Um, what it's been shown to do is actually drop IQ levels, so it impacts how children think, their cognition. It leads to behavioral problems, developmental delays. Um, it's even been linked to things like ADHD and conduct disorders, um, and even connected to things like criminality. Dr. Abdul El Sayed is a politician who is vocal on the Flint water crisis. To this day, there are still leaded piping in the ground in Flint. Uh, to this day, there are still questions about the quality of the testing of the water in Flint. And to this day, there are a lot of people who still don't believe uh, in their water supply. Leanne Walters is not only a resident of Flint, but is also an award-winning citizen scientist. I run a citizen-led fluorine testing in the city of Flint. Um, to make sure there's a check and balance to what the city's numbers are versus um, what our numbers are. Spoiler alert, their numbers don't match ours. Um, and it's because of the way they're testing, which is not illegal, but it's not the right, it's not the way people drink their water. A lot of community water utilities were skirting that by going into areas that wouldn't show positive results for lead. And my house is a perfect example. So when we did our testing with the city, the way the city tested us, my first test was 104 parts per billion. Our average number was 2,500 parts per billion. And our highest test was 13,200 parts per billion. Hazardous waste is 5,000. So it's ongoing right now today. Uh, people are still recommended to be on bottled water and filtered water because our pipes are being replaced. If you switch your source of supply, you have to make up, you have to be really careful in terms of making sure that you're going to treat the new source of supply uh, with the proper chemistry and, and treatment protocols. Um, we do everything with bottled water still to this day. Brush our teeth, um, wash our dishes, cook with it, drink with it. But it, it's kind of just the norm now. So, you know, the story of Flint is the story of this unbelievable um, crime that was committed against one of the most vulnerable populations in our country. But the story of Flint is also this incredible story about how people came together and fought back. Moms and activists and pastors and journalists and movie producers and scientists and doctors all came together um, and said, hey, we're not taking this. And they fought back, especially on behalf of the children. Um, and that's what I hope people remember Flint by, not this disaster that happened, but really how we have almost become a model for recovery and hope, um, really focused on our children.